One of the ways you can cut your grocery budget way down is by planning what I like to call Kroger Red Bag Meals. You don't know me, I'm Hope, and this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. This was an impromptu video because I stopped at Kroger on the way back from taking our son to work today, and the red bag area was stuffed to overflowing with really great produce. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the red bag area of Kroger, it's a special display that is a markdown area, and you get everything that is in a red mesh bag for 99 cents. So I thought it'd be really fun to show you how to menu plan using the bargains you'll get in that area of the store. I bought seven different red bagged items, brought them home, so that's exactly $7. Sales tax on food here in the state of Illinois is 1%, which means each one of the red bags was exactly $1. What you see on the table in front here is $7 worth of red bag produce. One of the first things you'll notice I did when I got home was take it out of the bag, wash it, and set it in piles so I could see exactly how much it was that I was working with. Now, the next thing I did was take an inventory, and I do this every single Thursday. On Thursdays, we do what is called a perishable food inventory. That means I look in the refrigerator, I look at perishable food that's maybe sitting out on the countertop because that's where it belongs, and I make a complete list. Now, the list, as with everything in my life, is prioritized. And that means that the items that are produced that have the shortest shelf life that I need to use up right away, they are all the way at the top of my perishable food list. Using that list and the seven bags of produce, I came up with a meal plan that will feed us for probably five or six nights. I'll make three main dishes and each of those dishes should have at least eight servings in them, meaning they'll serve us for two evenings. Now, I am gonna tell you exactly what I had to add that I already had at home. I cooked up one pound of black beans. I pay $1.25 a pound for black beans and I buy them in 25 pound bags. These black beans, however, were given to me by a friend, so they didn't cost me anything. I put them into the pressure cooker, and I'm just gonna show you this. The reason that I chose to use black beans that were dry instead of canned is because I knew I could put them in the pressure cooker. I left a few of those black beans in here, but look at that amazing, I don't know, what do you call it? Black bean juice? <laughs> it's the it's the liquid that is left over after you cook the black beans. That liquid I am keeping because that is going to form the base of the soup that I'm making. So make sure whenever you're cooking beans, think about what can I use that liquid that is left over after I cook the beans, can I use it for cooking it in a recipe? And in this case, that's gonna be part of a soup that I'm making. One of the other things that I'm adding is four cups of dry rice. I cooked it up in the rice cooker. I'll bring it over here so you can see it. And that cooked rice also is going to be added to these base ingredients. Other than that, all I added were a couple of yellow onions. I had a few carrots. I already peeled them a little bit that were left over in the refrigerator. So this is odds and ends, guys. And I had two stalks of celery, so I grabbed those. Other than that, the only other thing that I'm adding is a little bit of the um, the red and the green cabbage that I had on hand that I just cut up. This is about 50 cents worth of cabbage that I cut up into smaller pieces. That's everything. Now, if you're keeping track, I added $4 worth of ingredients that I had at home, which I actually didn't have $4 in it because the black beans were free. But if you were paying for the black beans, then that would be an additional $4 worth of ingredients, plus the $7, that's all of the items that I got in the Kroger red mesh bags. So we're up to $11, and remember, we're making three main dishes, those three main dishes, each of them will have at least eight servings in them, meaning that you will get 24 servings and that is less than 50 cents per serving. You wanna see what I'm gonna make? Let's go. The next thing I do when I'm menu planning is I write down the dishes that I know I'm going to make. In this case, we're gonna make black bean and rice bowls. I'll make a stir fry and I will also make a vegetable soup. I'm gonna set that over to the side because in a second, 
I'm going to list underneath each of those main dishes the ingredients on the table that will go into them. I like to sort of start making sure that I have enough of each ingredient. Once you take it out of the mesh bag and you wash it, I count them to make sure that I know how many of each item that I have. These are the black beans that will go for the rice bowls. And I've already pre-decided that about half of a, of a cut up onion is gonna go uh, in the rice bowls. One of these large peppers will go for the rice bowl. Definitely at least two of these avocados. Avocados are hard to buy in the red mesh bags, I'm gonna tell you, because either they're really, really overripe or you just can't tell. So it's sort of, uh, I think they look okay, so I'm gonna buy them. It's one of those things, and I'm hoping I get enough good avocado out of these four avocados. This one is definitely not as ripe as the other three, so I'm gonna make sure that this avocado is left. It's nice and large. I'm gonna leave this for tomorrow night, and I'm gonna hope for tonight's meal, for those rice bowls that I get enough out of these three avocados for tonight's dinner. Two of these tomatoes cut up are going to be with the rice bowls. I'm gonna use, of course, half of the rice with the rice bowls. And then this is going to give us something crunchy and also colorful to go into the rice bowls. So that's everything for the spicy Mexican rice bowls. Then I'm gonna very quickly do exactly the same thing with the other two recipes. The celery is gonna go in the soup. Two of these carrots will go into the soup. The other three carrots will go for the stir fry. Once again, soup and stir fry, I'll sort of cut, uh, these will be sort of half, half of the soup, half of the stir fry. We'll do a couple of these in the stir fry. This will go in the soup and you can see so on and so on. That's how this goes. So I have one recipe, two recipes, and then this can go for the soup, this can go for the stir fry, and you can see how visually I can see. The reason I do this, guys, is to make absolutely certain that I have enough ingredients for each of the recipes. And you'll notice that I don't really, I say recipe very, very loosely, because most of the time when I cook, there is no actual written recipe. All right, so I can see here in front of me, and I'm gonna use a couple of these apples in the stir fry as well. Sometimes that little hint of sweetness in stir fry guy, it's really, really good. All right, over here, we have it all divided up. This is for the spicy black bean bowls. This is for the stir fry, and all of these ingredients are for the soup. That looks pretty evenly distributed to me, and not only that, I've used pretty much everything. The only thing that I deliberately have not used as I don't cut the avocado up until the last minute because it will brown. And then I've left one of the bunches of bananas or, or the bunch of bananas. And I've also left two of the apples because in order to have kind of the complete meal deal feel, then that means we're gonna wanna have some fruit alongside of whatever this main dish is. The next thing you're going to want to do is to cut everything up in whatever size pieces you're going to use for the recipes. I'm back, everything is cut up, and Daniel has joined me in the kitchen. Hello. He is gonna demonstrate the black bean and rice bowl, and while he is doing that, we gotta put some spices in it. Oh, yeah. Spices first. This isn't, so when we do a black bean bowl, onion powder, garlic powder, probably two of the main things that we're gonna make sure that we put in. We have this really interesting spice mix. It's black and Caribbean seasoning. And we got it on clearance at Kroger. I'll show you two bucks for this big bottle. To be honest with you, we hardly ever use recipes. We sort of start <laughs> pouring some things in and then we mix it up and taste it and see how it tastes. This is a good four cups of black beans, which means if we want eight servings, uh, Daniel's gonna take a half a cup of black beans. This kind of menu planning is particularly helpful if you're getting toward the end of the month, you have just a few uh, dollars left for groceries, something like this could really salvage your grocery budget and get you to the end of the month. He is using three quarters of a cup of rice. We're gonna do this like we would a Buddha bowl, guys. Uh, this is two thirds cup. Uh, two, it's two thirds cup. Like <laughs> I said, it's two thirds cup. And then he's gonna take a good half cup of the black bean mixture and put it in there and then finish off the bowl with some other things and you'll see what that looks like. I made a really quick dressing to go on top of it. This is just some basic white vinegar with a little sugar added. Uh, some soy sauce, onion powder, garlic powder, and then we added a little bit of lemon juice. I would much rather have used lime juice, but no, 
we don't have any lime juice in the kitchen right now. Something is seriously wrong with my kitchen that there is no <laughs> lime juice. So we used a little lemon. Lime would have certainly been better with this recipe. Uh, he's just gonna top it with whatever he wants. While he's doing that, I'm gonna cut into one of the slightly suspect avocados and see what we got. As I told you, you know, when you buy the avocados in that bag, sometimes you wind up with a really great avocado and other times it just, it does not go as well. So I have no idea what this is gonna be when I cut into it. <gasps> it's not bad, you guys. Hey. It's, got, it's got some black and dairy over there that I'm gonna take out. But really, look at that. I got some good avocado to use there. And then I'm gonna cut this up on top and we'll show you what this bowl looks like when it's finished. Cause Dan is in a hurry. His girlfriend is performing in some sort of, uh, I don't know what, like a play or something tonight. So he's gotta get there on time. Throw some cabbage in because I like whenever you make one of these bowls, like it's a texture thing, right? You want some crispy along with some kind of mushy, along with some warm, and so that makes it really nice. All right, there I'm just gonna go. show you what that looks like. And all of this, and remember, know how many total cups of each thing you have so you can divide it up into how many servings you need. This is gonna be eight servings worth. And I think you can see we're gonna add a small piece of fruit with this, and that's gonna be supper. Did you add the dressing? I did not. Oh, good. Okay, he's going to add a little bit of my dressing, and then he's all set to go. Grab a fork, son. Take a little taste test. While he's grabbing a fork to take a taste test, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so I can show you how to put the soup together. I'm waiting to see. I'm always anxious. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Ah. Excellent. <laughs> Spicy black bean bowl, super easy to make, guys. I mean, super easy to make. Once you've got the rice and the beans, like that's 75% of it, other than cutting just a few things up. He is on his way out the door. Thank you. You're very welcome. Love that. The next thing we're going to do is, this is, minus the avocado, this is all the material for the soup. I do not know, once I cut it up, I realized how much it was. I don't know if it's even gonna fit into the pressure cooker. Remember, we started out with this pressure cooker, which has all of the juice left over from cooking the one pound of, of dried black beans. Bean broth. Plus, yeah, that's a great way to put it. I'm just gonna start spooning these things in. This is like a dump. Put it back under pressure for about 14 minutes and the soup is done. Yes, my hands are clean. Yes, I clean my nails. Life is good. I think it is all gonna fit. I'm afraid to pick it up and scrape it in there because it's a lot. Yeah. I might wind up with it all over the floor. I might anyway. <laughs> uh, just to remind you what we put in here, we've got some tomato, uh, we've got one of those peppers, we have some celery, three of those potatoes, we've got about half of our carrots, so about two carrots. I think it's all gonna fit. We've got two of those small squash that we got. All of this, remember, was from the Kroger bags. It is gonna fit, all right. Yeah, you do good. This is fantastic. I will have to add a little bit more water to this broth. I'm gonna show you once again how I'm gonna season this. I want it to be, the black beans just scream like black bean chili, don't they? So I'm gonna use some of the same basic seasonings that I used for the, I'm gonna wipe my hands. Guys, real quick, I'm gonna wash my hands, I'll be right back. I saved a little bit of the rice back. You can throw in some raw rice or you can throw in some cooked rice and it's gonna probably add another bowl worth of, of soup in there. And it's also gonna make it a little bit thicker so it's heartier, kind of sticks to your ribs. What I'm going to do now is add all the seasonings. I like garlic powder and we're gonna add, and you'll notice, I'm sorry guys, I just don't, I'm not a measurer. I wish I was. I measure by shakes and glugs, and that's about it. A little chili powder. Because remember, I want this to be kind of like a, like a black bean chili feel. Smoked paprika, my favorite spice of all time. Seriously. It's a game changer. If you've never used smoked paprika, it's so different than the regular paprika. Worth every penny of it. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this because clearly it's gonna cook down some, but you wanna make sure, especially in the pressure cooker, that you have enough 
liquid in there. You do not want it burning to the bottom of the pressure cooker. I speak from experience. I have had it happen. That looks very nice. We're going to put the lid back on this pressure cooker. I'm going to pressure cook it for about 12 minutes. And then once the pressure is released, I'll get a bowl of it for you and, um, and I'll shoot it and show you what it looks like in the bowl. We got one more recipe to go, guys. We have a lot of vegetables that are cut up for a stir fry. We'll take a look at that in just a sec. Here's all the stir fry vegetables cut up. I don't use oil in my stir fry. If you do, guys, that's fine. You can use a little olive oil or whatever um, high heat oil you want. This is just a few tablespoons of water in the bottom of a nonstick pan. And you can see I got it nice and hot. I'm going to add the onions to that. Oops, those didn't go apart really well. They will in the cook. <laughs> You'll see I'm not a precise cook. I mean, and, and one, of the, one of the ways that you really save money on groceries, honestly, is by not necessarily cooking everything according to what the recipe says that you that you should. I think creatively using what you have on hand is super important as you learn to lower your grocery bill by cooking with what you were able to find on sale. And really, I, I hope, look guys, if this video is being super helpful for you to feel like you're confident in buying things either on clearance or markdown or the red bag deals at Kroger, um, getting those lost leaders and figuring out what to do with them once you get home. Would you do me a super big favor? Would you scroll up and hit that like button? Because that's super important for us with the YouTube algorithm. So the YouTube knows that you're enjoying the video and you'd like to see more like this video. We're gonna cook these down for just about two, three minutes. And then I'm gonna add the second set of vegetables. The onions are all cooked down. I added a little bit of soy sauce. I add soy sauce to the stir fry as I go along. The next vegetable I'll add will be the carrots. I like to add the ones that are going to take a little longer to cook toward the beginning of the stir fry and then work my way to those that don't take quite as long. All right, these are the potatoes. Kind of did have circles with everything. Sorry guys, once again, remember I just washed my hands. My hands are clean. My hands are very clean. All right. You can't cut, of course, potatoes can't be cut too far ahead anyway. Had I thought about it ahead of time, I think matchsticks would have been better for these potatoes. I feel like they're kind of big, but you know, cooking isn't about perfection. It's about feeding hungry tummies and filling them, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to add a little bit more liquid here. Let that cook for a couple minutes. And then after that's cooked, I'll go ahead and add this cut up squash, the apples at the same time. You'll notice I cut the apples a little too soon. They're gonna be a little bit brown, but that won't matter. And then I'll add the tomatoes last. Uh, as I go along, as I'm adding things, once again, this is just straight soy sauce, guys. And I always keep water on hand too while I'm stir frying. I'll add a little onion powder little bit of garlic powder, little no salt seasoning. And then I'm adding this, this is called everything seasoning. This stuff is the bomb. This stuff is from Jamo's, J-A-Y-M-O apostrophe S. I'll see if I can find a link. This stuff is absolutely amazing. I mean, this tastes so good. I'm getting really low on it. So I gotta figure out where I can get more of this stuff. So that will go into the stir fry as well. And I'll show you what it looks like once it gets cooked down. Stir fry is done, to be honest with you. It turned out a little bit more like kind of a potato hash than a stir fry, but I think it's gonna taste really good. Here's what it turned out looking like in the pan. And then remember, I reserved six cups of the rice in a separate bowl so that we would have rice to serve. So everybody gets three quarters of a cup, a cup of rice and then about a cup of the stir fry over the top. And remember, this is gonna be served either with a banana or an apple. I would think a banana because there's already apple in here. By the way, the sweetness of the apple made me think that it would be really good to add a little bit of cinnamon also to this mixture. And I think it's gonna taste outstanding. The soup is done. Here's what it looks like. It's very hearty soup and the entire pressure cooker is very, very full. 
with this soup. So I highly anticipate that this will last us at least two days. This is at least eight servings, if not a little bit more. What did I have left over? This is it, guys. One pepper is all I had left over. I only put one pepper instead of two in the stir fry. And so this is the lone pepper that is left over. Now remember, the red bags provided the basis for this menu. And so you guys did not have to look at my chicken scratch, <laughs> which you never would have been able to read. I did a graphic for you that showed you all of the ingredients that we use just to remind you and all the red bag items are at the top of this menu plan and all the items that I added that were I already had at home I provided uh, the value for those remember the black beans were free because a friend of mine happens to know that we love beans and so she gave us a pound of black beans otherwise if you had had to purchase the black beans it would have added about a dollar 25 to the cost of this menu the cost of the entire menu for three main dishes each of those main dishes is eight servings. The total cost for me was $10. That averages out at about 42 cents per serving. If I had bought the black beans, it would still be under 50 cents per serving. If you're ready for more tips and strategies to lower your grocery bill, we've done a lot of videos on that topic. I chose one of them. It's right over there for you to take a look. I'm gonna try the soup and... Mm. It's really good and I have a lot of dishes to do now.